Do you follow trends or do you follow Dharma? Which of the two do you think would lead to your better welfare? I think really it's obvious, but normally in the social world out there in, in the lay world, uh, it's often it's often necessary to follow trends in order to be accepted in society. I mean, you don't want to take a step out of the out of the playbook or out of the narrative in order to fit into society. Now, sometimes I wonder what the cost is to simply just fit in and follow a narrative. You know, you just say so to get along. And I don't know if that will ever lead to anything good in the long run. Because this means uh, <clears throat> ignoring one's intuition, ignoring the true Dharma, ignoring the truth of things, and uh, going along with false with falsities and falsehood and and in short the fool's way of life. So I've said before, like when someone is used to seeing fool's gold, it's hard to recognize real gold. So which one do you do? Which one are you? Which one do you follow? See, it's often understood and it's been said in the suttas and by many sages uh, over, over time that wisdom does not flow with the world. Wisdom goes against the current. And even so, in terms of uh, practice, see, the citta, the mind, likes to come up through the six senses all the time and go outwards into the world, into phenomena. And seeks pleasure and happiness in phenomena which is impermanent and always changing which is not the real happiness happiness in the five aggregates for example feelings you know, pleasant feeling it comes and goes as well as the body like bodily uh, sensual sensual pleasures they just come and go real quick they're fleeting it's kind of like the breadcrumbs of the real happiness that comes from astute concentration and uh, the development of wisdom which takes you to liberty now wisdom goes against the current it doesn't flow with trends the truth never flows with trends dharma never flows with trends dharma is always dharma uh, people want to try to rationalize and negotiate or create moral high grounds in order to get around the dharma for example when one of the moral precepts is uh, refrain from killing any living beings and that also means suggesting influencing pointing to uh, creating situations whereby people or beings can get killed will get killed and that all includes refraining from killing of living beings right of any living beings and we would consider this when we watch uh well in the past before i was a monk course i'm talking about movies and uh listening to people when they're angry uh on on influential uh let's say radio stations influential tv stations or people with who have influence on platforms um, there's always this need to create a higher moral ground the high moral ground to uh to constitute the action that comes thereafter right and we're seeing this now in media and everywhere else in the world, we see, we've see we always seen it. People get punished. The, the big slave gets punished when the, the slave tries to lead, lead the revolt. And they make sure they make a, uh, a, a, uh, a, like a, a lesson out of him for others to understand what will happen if you step out of line. Now, this is extreme in some cases, but the question is, do you follow trends or do you follow Dharma? Right, because the Dharma will lead you to the wisdom faculty. It will lead you to wisdom. Will lead you to more enrichment. Will lead well, not more. Will lead you to an enriched life. Will lead you to a profitable life. Will lead you to more virtue, right? And happiness born of wisdom is a different happiness that is found in the fleeting, impermanent uh, phenomena out there, or in feelings, or in the five aggregates of the human being. So which one do you want to give yourself? Do you want to give yourself real gold or fool's gold? Do you want to just eat the peanuts of happiness? Or do you want to really get into what real happiness is? And in fact, happiness is just a byproduct. Bliss, bliss, and 
the, the, the bliss of Nibbana, the Buddha talks about, is the best thing there is. There's nothing higher, right? As Buddhists, we know this, right? It's, it's in the text all over the place. The Buddha never describes Nibbana, but teaches us, the, teaches us the way to get to Nibbana. Now, wisdom will never flow with trends. Wisdom will never flow with the world. Wisdom can never be in the same sentence or the same phrase, uh, so to speak, as a metaphor. In, with greed, hatred, delusion, anger, and uh, all the other defilements out there, all the other negative qualities, wisdom does not live there. Wisdom goes against these things. So be careful when you're out there listening, who you listen to. And when you listen, even if you're listening to uh, things that are not necessarily true or correct, understand them and don't follow them. Okay, the worst thing you can do to yourself is to lead a foolish life and lie to yourself like a fool. That's the worst thing, one of the worst things you can do to yourself. And of course, the obvious, which is um, uh, taking your own life. Now, I don't suggest that to anybody. Try Seek help if you're in that situation, please. Come and talk to me. Come and talk to a monk. Come, don't, don't do it. But in terms of lying to yourself or, or telling yourself, uh, filling your mind with delusion, uh, trying to seek refuge in delusion and ignorance is not going to lead you to anything skillful or anything wholesome or anything good, let alone the real gold. So if you're tired of uh, using, seeing and uh, reminiscing in fool's gold, come to the real gold, right? Follow Dharma, follow the practice. Now the Buddha always said the Dharma and Vinaya are the authority right so it's the dharma teachings the teachings of the buddha and dharma itself and the, and discipline the code of discipline for monks nuns and lay people right there is a code of discipline for lay people okay and it starts with the five precepts and then it, it the the noble eightfold path still applies it still applies right even for lay people okay so you got we do the best we can uh, we do the best we can in order to improve ourselves. Now, staying focused, it, one needs to be rigid and not to be rigid. They both th that both of those statements apply in different situations. Sometimes we need to be strong against uh, the flow of the world, which flows in the direction of ignorance. The flow of wisdom goes against this goes against this direct direction. In fact, being a Buddhist is being 180 degrees, uh, I guess, uh, opposed, 180 degrees to where ignorance goes. Uh, if Are you strong enough to resist the temptation to follow the ignorance? Now, always question, what do you want to give to yourself? Now, for some reason, most of us are all beat, being beaten down. We believe we don't deserve better. We believe a lot of things. Uh, that have been that we've, that have we've learned from our conditioning from our family, our parents, or uh, our foster parents, or depending whether you're an orf were orphaned or not, or adopted or whatever, uh, or blood family. And not all blood family are good, you know. We're we're seeing that more and more these days, right? Uh, but then there's school, and then there's society, and then there's the people that you're influenced by, right? But for some reason, uh, we, we tend to have this kind of, we don't deserve that, we don't deserve this, we don't deserve that, oh, I'll be happy with this. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Humility is good. But beating yourself down and, and, and not allowing yourself to have, comp not having compassion for yourself and goodwill for yourself, right, and not developing joy, well, that's terrible. You know, that's a miserable state to be in. The Buddha wanted us, wanted us all wanted all, any person following his teachings to thrive in life, to actually have a lot of power, to have a lot of strength, to have a lot of capability. In fact, to develop and cultivate our full capabilities as human beings and ultimately ends <clears throat> in the realization of the cessation of dukkha, right? Or Nibbana, or if you want to call it an enlightenment or li liberation or freedom or the, un or the great unbinding, right? So these things we deserve, we deserve them. Own it, own it, 
tell yourself you deserve better all the time and work for it. Now, when I say you deserve better, I'm not talking about as in the worldly way, like more rights. Well, they're important too, of course. I'm not talking about in that section, like a better partner or better salary. Those, I guess, are important. But in terms of Dharma, we're not, I'm not talking about it. What I'm saying is you deserve wisdom, right? You deserve a good rebirth if you choose that direction. Right? You deserve better in that sense. Okay? I'm telling you. You. Watching. Right? You deserve better. Own it. Now follow this way. Follow the Dharma. Right? Abide by a, a set of, co like a code of discipline that you don't, that you don't, that you're rigid with. Okay? That you're rigid with. That you don't uh, buckle, that you don't buckle as soon as something, you get challenged out there or in here. Okay? So that's very important very important that will get you to freedom that will get you that will come in handy when you need it to to uh, fight against uh, the flow of or, or I guess to resist the temptation to go along to get along right don't be afraid don't be afraid uh, what people think is not really important as long as you're not doing any harm so it's not like an fu mentality right it's not that kind of mentality that I'm talking about, but it's more of a mentality to stick to doing what's right all the time, living the wholesome life all the time. So, do you follow trends or do you follow Dharma?